Namaste, um, Reverend Bill. So good to see you again. Well, top of the morning to you from California. Wonderful. And, uh, good morning I'm, to you. I'm sitting here in California, and the sun is just coming up over the Sierra Nevada mountains, sun shining through my redwood trees in my backyard, and, uh, and you're starting to get dark there. <laughs> yes, thank you very much. Uh, and uh, yes, uh, we've got nine hours time difference between uh, where you are and where I uh, currently am. Now, this is a post reading chat. You had your matching and reading just a few weeks ago, and then uh, we decided to have a little talk and, um, in a way, explain your matching and the reading process and um, somehow edit our little talk into your matching and reading so that it's somehow narrated and people can understand your process or in general the, the matching and the reading process better. Having said that, how, you know, what were your intentions uh, before you even got your reading? Why, why did you do it? That's, that's really interesting because that was my second reading this lifetime. It's, I got the first one a decade ago, 10 years ago, when I was ordered to get one done, ordered by, by a guru at an ashram. You got to go get it done. I says, I don't believe in these. <laughs> she says, but they believe in you. Go get it done, right? And, and that one ran from 2010, and it ended in 2020, which is our current time frame. And uh, I was concerned because there was no predictions after that. And it basically alluded to the fact that that was the end, that, you know, 2020 looked like that was the time I was going to go. But other than that not happening yet, 2020 isn't over, <laughs> that not happening yet, uh, absolutely everything that was in my first naughty reading, everything that was predicted, absolutely 100%, everything happened. There was nothing left to be done on it. So I got, to, I got to thinking, well, is this the end? Do I, do I have further? And then circumstances of events, and there's no accidents in life, right? So circumstances and events, we ran into each other on the internet. And uh, one thing led to another, and then this energy was created. And, and I decided, and you suggested, and we worked together on looking at, let's go forward. Let's, let's get another reading. Because I didn't know it was possible to get a second reading. So my friends out there that are watching that, that have had a reading done in India around the same time I did or a little later, uh, they may think, well, why do I need a second one? I didn't think I needed one, but the second one really put all the blocks into the foundation. I mean, it just, it completed things. It answered questions. And at my age, I'm in the 75 range here, uh, you're not looking for career success and all these other things that you're looking for when you're younger, when you get a reading done. At, at this stage of life, there's spiritual things, there's goals, there's, and, and there's your grandchildren and your children and, and, and other things in your life. And there's the creative side and the spiritual side. So I was looking not for answers about wealth, prosperity, career, fame, fortune. I was looking at spiritual milestones, you know, mile markers of my life mm -hmm. going down the road. So. Am I on the true path? It's just my dharma. And so when I got the reading done, I was looking for confirmation of what I felt was my dharma yeah. and uh, my, my chosen path, uh, which the reading did. And I'm glad we're doing this a couple weeks after the reading because if we had a conversation directly after the reading, I was kind of like blown out. I mean, it was like uh, I, I was spent the last two weeks uh, recalling what was said, trying to figure out the pieces and everything else. It's one of these things when you get a reading that it's like cooking a, a stew, you yeah. know, Irish stew, right? You throw things into it and the more things you, you keep finding more ingredients put into it. With this reading, you keep finding more things within it that enrich it and enhance it and more meaning comes place. So you hear when you're getting your reading done, for those people going to get a reading done, when you hear the reading the first time, you don't really hear the reading. You're picking up selected highlights. So when somebody asked you right afterwards, you got boom, boom, boom. But weeks go by, and then when you get 
a, a video sent to you, like you had the courtesy to send me a video, which is a beautiful thing because when you look at it again, a second time and a third time. Yes, I mean, for, for the audience, so they know, we record your reading and we send you the recording of your reading <clears throat> a few days, a couple of weeks or so after your reading is over, including everything else you need to do your homework, your healing work, called pujas. And that's what we send to, to you too. We send a recording of your reading. We send you pictures of your palm leaf. Um, as you might remember, we send you the pujas in a PDF format, all the gods and goddesses you need um, <clears throat> to perform the pujas too. And um, that comes in a downloadable link. And you got that too, of course. Uh, you had your reading done um, not that long ago. Um, I think about two weeks ago or so. Yeah, about two weeks. <clears throat> yes. But it, 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 it some, in some ways, it's like a lifetime ago. And sometimes it's like just finished a few minutes ago. So I, I'm telling people, when you get a reading, be open. I mean really open. You have to open not just your mind, because a lot of people intellectually, they're ready to accept things. But you really have to open your heart. Yes. And, and uh, let it go where it's going to go. It may take some twists and turns unexpectedly uh, uh, it does. mine honestly kind of went where I thought it was going to go but uh, many of my friends have, have already had their reading there and uh, it, it took some unexpected twists and turns for them and, and some to their delight and some to their amusement and, and some they're still trying to figure out what but you have to be open this is not just an intellectual exercise this is really a heart thing you have to really get your heart into it and and listen fully so listen with your mind watch with your eyes but understand with the heart it's a beautiful experience and i i hope anybody watching this video do it well, one of the same questions you probably get uh, uh all the time dr q is why do i need it right why what's what's in it for me how come i how come i need this and and, I'll, and somebody from the West, most especially us think, or why do I got to, you know, spend money, get somebody to go through all this stuff, get all these things. I'm telling you that when you get one done, you'll never have that question again. You know why. You'll understand why you had that done. But there are parts of yourself that the universe, you know, will mirror to you. And, and basically, uh, this is not about not using your free will. This is all about your free will. What people don't understand is everything you've done in the quote unquote past, whether it's a past life, past moment, past thought, your thinking, your desires, your actions, all you've done is basically have been as your free will. Absolutely. And that, and that free will, let me get, the sun is shining brightly on me. <laughs> and that, that free will is uh, what's created your thing. So, the fact that if you're young enough when you get this reading done, and this is my theory, uh, if you're young enough when you get this done, you can see, well, 30 years from now, this is going to happen. Like maybe I'm going to get lung cancer and I'm smoking now. Well, if you know that 30 years prior, yes, just the knowledge of that, you know, will get you to change your, your, your behaviors. You know, you'll probably give up smoking. You'll probably change your diet. So just because it's in the card, and send the cards. Here's my life. No, you don't have to end up there. And that's the thing that people got to understand. You're getting this reading. It's like signs on the highway, you know, slow down, there's a curve ahead. So you have an opportunity to alter and change things. They're not locked in stone. So that's something they got to realize. So sometimes, well, my, my reading, you know, I got a reading a long time ago. This didn't happen, that didn't happen. So, but the fact that you knew about those potentialities, it changed your behaviors. You, yeah. you were told you might be getting divorced. And then you, all of a sudden you started treating your spouse really well. And, and you started working on it. Well, that changed that. And that in turn changes something else. Now, as you get older like me, uh, not that many options. <laughs> anyway, so a Western person, especially if you're young, meaning 20s, 30s, 40s, even in your 50s, you're still working on career. You're still working on, on finances and family and making decisions on your life. You're only halfway through or less than, you, know, you, you got at least double that time to go. So having 
tools yes. that help you handle what's coming. That's all it is. It's a tool. So why do you need it done? Anything's a tool, just like you go to a, a, life, a life coach counselor, right? And he tells you how to handle things. Well, this is a spiritual life coach counselor, you know, counselor and, and you're getting a little different set of, of circumstances thrown at you. But the fact that knowing things or being told things ahead of time gives you the, uh, the wisdom to handle them when they come. Even if they still come, you have, now you have the wisdom, you have a chance to, to build up to it and, and, and adjust to it. So yeah, I have no regrets. In fact, it's just the opposite of that. Getting this done, and I thought, well, I need to use a second. But if, it told me a lot, and uh, it was nice to know that I, I have a continued future as well, <laughs> past 20, 20. I also had two readings done, and I can only second uh, what uh, Reverend Bill just said. The second reading confirmed fundamentals of the first reading. It, it's, it's the same, I'm the same person, Reverend Bill's the same person, so that hasn't changed, obviously, but our, our trajectory has changed. As I told Reverend Bill, before we, had, uh, before we became friends and got to know one another better, um, in my first reading I was told I'll die of a heart attack, age 77 to 79. But I was given pushes to do them, and they said if I did them you know, uh, with an open heart, literally speaking, uh, with an open heart, then uh, I, can, I can change that, and um, I can overcome that heart attack and continue to live into my 80s. My second reading, the reader said, oh, you're, you have the gift of longevity, which means he could not determine the, the, the blocks of years uh, where I'll pass on. So that shows a change uh, in the few years between the first and the second reading. My, mine was, I think, three years apart, and yours were, were 10 years apart. So yeah, you can have two readings. You can actually have several readings. I know uh, a few people that had five or more readings um, in their lifetime. It can be done because, as you might remember, there are 18 Maharishis um, from the southernmost parts of India, uh, great sages, uh, Maharishis, that wrote palm names. So in theory, you can have really quite many readings uh, if you wish. But that's um, for a different time and a different talk, how many readings we can have or not. The last thing I'd like to add um, to our audience is um, your life is not set in stone, period. The only person that creates reality is you and no one else. You may take the reading on board as a guideline, helping you overcome certain challenges and then uh, improve your life. Because really, bottom line, why should I get a reading done? Bottom line is, you want to have a better life afterwards, period. It's, it, you cannot be more simple than that. You're given a trajectory in your reading, a life trajectory that is, and all you want to do is you want to improve that trajectory after the reading, whatever better and whatever trajectory you have um, for your life. To me, it meant longer life because health is my biggest challenge in life. Um, and uh, to Reverend Bill, where he is now is um, spiritual enlightenment. It's to me too, now that I know that I can live a little longer than I was predicted. So um, there you have it. Now, um, what's also important to let the audience know here is that we have edited your matching and your reading as uh, we've taken personal information out. Um, maybe you want to explain that too in just a minute or two, not too long, because we want to keep this interview short. <clears throat> Why yeah. to take uh, to to abbreviate and to edit um, your matching reading? Yeah, I, I felt that when I watched it because I, I, I'm a public person basically, but sure, wife, children, my grandchildren, they're not public people, and there was some things I'm just saying no, and and, and besides that, we also edit this down. Uh, hopefully, will be. There's some things that are just too sacred. Yes, it's like wow, you know. It's like uh, I can't, I can't say that. I, I, I can't present that. It's just, it's just, it's too precious. It's like it is sh sharing your heart openly to, and then to others to to make judgments and to make you know. But um, I have no regrets doing the reading. 
and I, and I I wanted to follow up with this because I did promise people we were going to air my reading, and, and so this is kind of a compromise because um, I want to share the process and my feelings about it, but I didn't want anyone to share a lot of uh, personal details. Of course, you'll get the gist of it if we edit this correct. You'll see how things match up, and you know there's some things that you know it's okay to say. So you'll understand, and my people that uh, and friends that really know me, they'll understand as well. Yes. Uh, to the audience, just to keep it short and simple, the whole process of matching and reading uh, that we do online takes about three hours. The first part is the matching, which takes about 45 minutes to an hour, give or take. And then there is a break of 15 minutes, and then uh, the reading starts. The reading lasts, uh, depending on how many questions uh, the seeker has, an hour, an hour and a half or so. Uh, so the reading itself, uh, the matching itself is quite so straightforward. In the matching process, the reader tries to identify the seeker's individual palm leaf. And you know it's a match when the reader was no clue who you, the seeker, are. In our case, Reverend Bill, the reader had no idea who this gentleman is. Of course, I, I know uh, Bill as the moderator <clears throat> in this reading and matching. But the reader and the interpreter in India had no clue. They only knew his thumbprint, hence his thumbprint name, and that he's a male. That's all they knew. And at the end of the successful matching, now we know it was successful because they identified your palm leaf, they were able to tell Bill his first name, father's first name, mother's first name, and many other things, <clears throat> which we will talk about in a minute as um, the, the so-called post-matching um, feedback that Reverend Bill would like to give. So uh, now we're gonna start the, the, the portion of the, the, the matching, and then uh, we will talk about how you felt about your matching experience. Thank you. Today we have two bundles, sir. In this bundle, we are going to search your palm leaf. We doesn't know which leaf contains for you, so Guruji will check one by one. Leaf. He will be reading one by one leaf to search your leaf. When the details matches for you, just say correct, sir. If the information not matching, just say wrong. So Guruji will change it, and he will read the next leaf. In which leaf all your information matches, like your name, father name, mother name, your date of birth, that contains your leaf. And we have prepared for you Shiva Vakya Maharishi. So it is very special Maharishi. Shiva Vakya. But just to step in here quickly, is the other camera running too? Maharishi. Yes, sir. Thank you. Shiva Vakya Maharishi. Shiva Vakya Maharishi wrote this poem. Just to give an idea, sir, there are 18 Maharishis, 18 of them. Agastya is the one in the middle. I won't be able to identify the other 17, but one of these 18 is Shiva Vakya Maharishi, one of them, because you already had a reading done um, many years ago, and that was yeah, by Agastya, the guy in the center. So obviously, since you already had his reading, we searched for another Maharishi who wrote a leaf for you, and in this case, it Shiva Makya Maharishi. Okay. Can we start, sir? Yes, we're ready. You are married, sir. Yes. Okay. You live with your partner. What was it? You live with your, your partner. partner. Yes. Good, good relationship with your partner. Yes. You have kids. You have child or children. I have children. Yes. Okay. You have two kids, two children. Or yes. You have daughter. There is a daughter. Or is I have a, a daughter second. You have daughter or daughters, sir? One or more daughters? The question is, sir, do you have at least one daughter? Just oh, yes. yes. One daughter, yes. Okay. And also you have son. There is also son for you. Also yes. son, at least one son. Yes. 
ஓரிடமே காண வேண்டும் நடப்பு காலம் துணை அறிவை you have brother sir there is a brother for him you have a brother sir a brother yes, yes. one brother for him one one brother for him you have only one brother sir one brother alive yes correct correct to yeah we call him the car we can do that only siblings and kids that are alive count in the matching process yes, sir one brother you also have sister so there is also sister for sister for him you. you have at least yes. one sister sir I have Leah, at least one sister yes yeah. so you have not even one of them so you have two sisters you actually have two sisters sir yes but i got a half sister i've never met no it's only full sibling sir only full sibling only full siblings yes uh, i got no full, i have no full siblings anywhere they're all half it is wrong so we need to change it is wrong. no real siblings we need to change it is my sister known all my life but different fathers yeah yeah we, we can only focus on the full siblings okay who are the karma and the other one you are the first child for your parents first you are the first born of your parents you are the first born yeah, child yeah yeah my mother and father yes 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 name the karma and the other one in your name sir one letter that is an n or t contains in your name so there is n or t in your name does your name your first name contain n november or t as in tom no what if your name one letter contains y sir your name contains y or y does your name contain y no on my name mother name n or t contains in mother name on my mother name Uh, the mother's name n or t you said him yes in the mother name there is n or t the mother's name contain n or t n or or t yes no. november or tom no why there is why in mother name there is y sir or is does your mother's name contain the letter y no no change you have grandchild sir there is a grandchild or grandchildren you are having sir you have at least one grandchild sir yes so you remain from the next i am saying one of them and the first child is son for you your first born is a son yes married the son is married sir and the yes. son is married correct so you remain from the next who will say you one of them having children have kids child or children and your oldest son has kids already at least one child yes good way on man from the son you have grandson that is grandson from the son so your son has a son at least one son yes sila bodi karma ke nadapu da for the son only one child sir one child for the son your son only has one child only one son nadapu da man se padida daughter married sir your daughter married a daughter married yes your daughter is married sir having yes. kids having child or children for the daughter uh this the daughter has at least one child your daughter yes so you remain well like to say that the children are doing business so they are self employed they do their own business self employed your your children sir <clears throat> are self employed they don't work for someone they work for themselves contractor artists um mm. not not like uh, employed by someone that pays them no kind of yourself you not employed daughters not uh shyam you mean both must be self employed or at least one of them is self employed one of them uh at least one of them is self employed then that's correct yes correct yes madam we are now see see you need to that you are involved in politics or political life you are involved in politics are you involved in politics sir it could be also municipal small town it doesn't have to be big scale something small or a spiritual social or you are involved in social organization service social organization or <coughs> spiritual or spiritual business or are you involved in social work or spiritual work i would say yeah. yes yes mm-hmm. good way on the left in the program da you follow any spiritual teacher so there is any spiritual master mentor teacher for you do you have a spiritual mentor or a teacher that you follow yes 
That person is still alive. Yes. The spiritual teacher is from different country, from a broad country, not from your same country. And your mentor is not from the same country that you are from, sir. Different country. Yes, correct. From Asia, the master is from Asia, India, China. Uh, that the person you're following as your mentor is from Asia. Yes. India, India, Indian master. It's in, from India. The master is starting at that, sir. M, R, O. And your mentor's name starts with the following letters, which Shiam is typing into the chat. M R A O G. Starts with that. It starts, right, Shiam? It's starting with it. Does it start with M R A O or G? No. 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 Incorrect. Starting at a B or B, so start with B or Or B as in Victor or B as in boy. So I'm going back, I'm looking at that the choice of letters. Uh, if the person goes by three names, one of those names starts with the uh, with the, one of those, yeah. But not the first title. Yeah. No, not the, the mentor has three names, three first names, or goes by oh, three names. It's got a, and one of them starts with M R A O G. One of them. It starts with an M. One of the one of his names starts with M. No. Starting with O. No. Starts with an O. No, wrong. Yeah. Uh, you are practicing any yoga, sir? Yoga, any special type of yoga, meditation you are practicing? Are you practicing yoga, sir, or meditation? Hello? Sir? Hello? Hello, sir? Yeah, did sir? you lose me? Yeah, you froze on us for a second. Um, do you oh. do you practice meditation or yoga, sir? Yes. You're also learning any astrology, astrology healing. Are you learning astrology or healing modalities? Um. Well, in doubt, we say yes because we will realize later. Okay, healing. Yeah. Okay. I would say yes. Okay. Yeah. Teaching, you're also teaching astrology or any uh, meditation you teach to others. Are you teaching people either astrology or meditation? Yes. Yeah. Daughter has daughters. So there is a granddaughter from the doctor. You have at least one uh, granddaughter from the daughter. Yes. And also there is a grandson, grandson from the daughter. You also have a grandson from the from your daughter. Yes. For the son, only one child for the son. Yes. Your son only has one child, correct. Besides the present partner, in the past you had another relationship, sir. There was another partner relationship for you. But before getting married, you had a you had another relationship. No. Me? No. No, no. The first part of the day is not wrong, so we are going for the second one to search your way. Thank you. <clears throat> but we're going moving on to the second bundle, sir. You're the first born child for your parents, sir. First child. 
You're the first born child of your parents, sir. That's correct. Yeah, for my father, but not for my mother, yeah. From the two together, yes, you are. Yes. Your parents have already passed away. Yes. Uh, the parents passed away more than 15 years. More than 15 years before they passed away. Your parents passed away more than 15 years ago. Yes. Uh, you live in your own house, own property, or living, sir. You live in your own house or property, sir. Yes. There is any loan or mortgage you're having, sir. Loan, debt, mortgage you're having. You carry any uh, debt. It could be a mortgage for the house. It could be a lease for the car. Car payment, uh, yeah. Credit card. Yes, correct, Jim. You're following a spiritual teacher, master, you're following. You have a spiritual master, sir. Yes. Male. The spiritual master is a male, male master. It's a male. Yes. Does your mother's name contain S or C? That's correct. Does your mother's name contain the letter C? That's correct. Mother name. I is as a word, I contains another. Does your mother's name contain the letter I as in Idaho? Your mother's name, sir. That would be wrong. Oh, well, it might be right. I might have misspelled it when I sent it to you. Uh, then can you can you write can you uh, write it again? Because uh, I'm looking at it. It could have been the I way that I have it, there is no I in it. Could have been like, could have been like. Don't don't say it. Just could be that way too. I don't know. I Are you not quite sure how it's spelled? I I'm not exactly sure how she spelled it. I'd have to. But. Uh, huh. Well, there are two different ways of spelling the name uh, Shiam. Or even, yeah. Um, so we're not so sure which one is the correct way of spelling uh, his mother's name. In one version, it's correct. There is an I. So let's yes. just say, let's just play with it. Well, let's say yes, because it's, you know, it's this almost the same spelling in both versions. Mm -hmm. There's only one letter difference. Um, yeah, so it, in one of the two versions is I is correct, yes. Your name and your father are the same thing, sir. Your name and father's name, same. That's correct. Your name and father's name, same. That's correct. You're born in the year 1946, 1947. You're born in 1946 or 1947. That's correct. Yes. 1946, you're born. You're born in 1946. Correct. Two children, for you, sir. One son, one daughter. You have two children, sir. One son and one daughter. You have total three grandchildren. Yes. You're a writer. Yes. You're getting governmental support, the pension. That's correct. Uh, can you repeat Shia one more time? Is your name Bol? No, similar Shia, but not correct. Similar, but not correct. Correct. Correct, Shia, yes. Correct. Correct. 
Wow, awesome, correct. Are you born on the 16th or the 17th of the month, sir? Yes. You're born on the 16th of the month, sir. Yes. You're born 1946. Yes. Your wife's name is Carol. Yes. Can you repeat, Shema Varta, I'm hearing you? It's close, close. It's close. What is it saying? Melika. Melika. My name is Melika. Melissa. Melissa. Okay. Very, very close. Because yeah. I. Maybe this may be mispronouncing it. It is mispronouncing it. Close. Well, sir, they will figure it. They will, they will tell you. Your name is Bill, sir. Yes. Born in March. Yes. One marriage for You've been married once. Yes. So we have been karma for that father, mother, not parents. Both parents have passed away. Yes. Who will be karma that for that father? We have half siblings, sir. Half brother, half sisters. Your friend. You have half siblings, sir. Half brother and half sisters. Yes. Whatever you've been karma for that father, you have been writing, writing books, writing. You're a writer. You write books. Yes. Who will be karma in the book? I'm also the writer writing the spiritual spiritual fantasy book writing. You're writing spiritual books. Yes. So you'll be karma in the book of the book for the March March 1946. Yes. March 1946. Correct. Excuse me, Shyam. You were born on the 16th of March, 1946, sir. Yes. Carol. Wife's name is Carol. Your wife's name is Carol. Carol. Yes, Carol. Mother name Marcella. 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 Marcella, is that what you're saying? Yeah. Correct. Correct. Your name is Bill, sir. Your name is Bill. Yes. Is that my leaf? Yay. Congratulations. Awesome. All right. All right. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you. This is your leaf, sir. All right. I'm surprised. Wow. Great job. Wow. Thank so you. So this bundle, this bundle, what is this family? What, what does all these people have in common, that group? They have the same thumb impression name, yeah. sir. I'll, ex I'll explain it to you. They, every, every single leaf in that bundle carries the same thumb impression name. The thumb secret thumb in all of this is, is your thumb impression. Destiny also, similar, similar destiny will be there for the people those who have same category, same ability, same destiny, but not exactly the same, but uh, common things will be same. Similar. Oh you're re you are you're not related to them you're not brothers or sisters or cousins no, but no, no, personality your soul soul and your soul sisters soul brothers right. and hence it could be very similar sometimes and not be a match and and so that's that's why they are all traveling in one bundle together in other way, in other way we can say as a twin twin for us, a twin. If someone is born as a twin, those who have the same categories will be there like this. Not based on the business. Someone in the world will resemble like you, will have the same ability, talents, or characteristics. Someone in the different part of the world with the same knowledge. Yes, and so you, you have twins across the globe. You're not related to them at all, but they have, they're similar to you. 
in your personality, characteristics, um, ability. Spiritual, spiritual DNA. Yes, correct. Yes, correct. Spiritual DNA is good. Good way of describing it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Then uh, we shall say thank you. Thank you very much to uh, our most senior reader, Guruji and, um, and uh, Shiam. We will put them in the waiting room for the next 15 minutes. In the meantime, sir, I will need to explain to you the next step. So please be stay online. We say thank you, Nandi, and bye-bye. Um, okay. We just uh, watched your matching, the abbreviated version of your, of your matching um, experience. In short, how was it? Tell me, how do, how do you feel about it? Well, if I said 100% accurate, I'd be underestimating how good it really was. Because even they do more than I did, apparently. Uh, I, forgot, I forgot how to spell my, my mother's first name. I mean, I had, I go, does it have an I in it? Does it have so, which, first off, right off the get-go here, when you tell people, and you told me, Bill, write these things down. I go, oh, I remember my mother's name, I know that, my father's name. You know, I mean, it was like, why is he telling me this, right? Actually, Not having the audience knows, we send everyone a matching form. It's called matching form, very simple. And it spells out your name, write down your name and how many letters does it have? Write down your mother's name, father's name, how many letters and so forth. Because we know during the matching process, people are either super excited, uh, nervous, distracted. It's, uh, it's a challenge, I know that, because you're gonna remember uh, exactly the spelling of uh, your, your, you know, your parents' name, sometimes your own, you know, you, the, how, how you spell your own name, and how many letters does it have? And these are questions that come over and over and over again, and you just get confused. So our friend Reverend Bill here, even though he was told, please write it down, it went in one ear and out the other, like a few other people that, that come to us too, I have to say. So please, if we do send you the matching form, um, there is a reason for that. It really helps you to stay focused because I can't help you. I have no idea what those parents' names are uh, or his spouse's name or you know the kids' names. I, I don't know. I just know Reverend Bill. And I haven't even met him yet personally, but I truly hope that at some point when COVID is over, I can uh, go and visit and see him in person. So uh, really, as a moderator, all I can do is connect the seeker with the Indians and try to help them with understanding the accent. Obviously, that's, that's a big one. And even if they do understand the accent, they might not necessarily understand the reading or the message itself. So that's, that's my job, um, to be um, the conduit, like, like the connector, if you wish, making sure that um, the seeker gets the message and understands the message. But now coming back to you, I do remember that after, you know, um, after realizing that, oh boy, I should have written it down, you did write it down on a piece of paper <clears throat> and it helped tremendously uh, with your matching process. Yeah, so uh, don't think that you're so smart. <laughs> you don't need that. It was such simple advice. Anyway, bottom line was the matching process, uh, it took, I don't know, it was well over an hour, I think, or, or right in that ballpark. And there were some that were just so close and then another one so close, but it wasn't exactly. And there was a question they asked me on the matching that had I gone to this reading the month before or the week before or three days prior to that reading, I would have had to say no and we wouldn't have had a match and we wouldn't have had a reading because what the reader basically asked or didn't ask, he says, it was almost a statement. He didn't really ask. He makes a statement. You're currently something, I don't remember exact words, but paraphrasing, you're currently a book. A spiritual book. Yes. And I hadn't been because I had all this other stuff going on until two days or the, two days before I had the thought, hey, I can do this now. I'm ready. I outlined it. I made a book cover design. And then the day before I actually started writing. So when he asked me that question, I go, yeah, I just started that, right? So, and then he's, so that was interesting because that told me this was exactly when I was supposed to get it done. No sooner, no sooner. This was the time. So the matching process is interesting. It's, uh, you, you don't, okay, other, other area, because uh, I had the same 
my first reading a decade ago, time of birth, what the readers in both these readings didn't know was not even my doctors knew my exact minutes of my birth. In other words, I was born between 1 and 1.30, and they took a guess and stabbed about the middle someplace. Uh, and when the, the reading this time, they go, you're born between 1 and 1.30. They didn't narrow down any more than that. And my, my first reading, they go, well, we know your birth date. We know your year. But we're confused on the time. It's between 1 something and 1.30, which was true answer as well. So it's interesting that my readings couldn't narrow down exactly. And my doctor couldn't either. So the real answer must be whatever, whatever the gods of these readings come up with. What they say, okay, it's this. Okay, great, because nobody knows. So that was interesting. That showed up on both my readings and, and, and the matching. So no, the matching was, uh, there was, there was times if somebody's getting a reading done, there's times when you're going, my God, they just went through seven, eight leaves. And what, am I going to get a reading, right? And then you go, well, that's really close. Maybe I, no. For example, they asked a question on siblings. I don't remember exactly what it was, but I only, I mean, I got three half brothers and three half sisters. Yes. And I'm going, okay, that's six siblings. And they go, no, you have no siblings. I go, what, what? And so I had to think about that. No, I don't have any siblings because I don't have the same parents. Uh, you know, they're all different different grouping there so that's something you got to think about so if you're adopted or if you got half siblings think about that when you do the matching because it does change your answer so yes Arnett, i was uh, i was really surprised the first reading i got on the matching this time it was just deja vu oh they did this again uh, how they do it i don't know from a thumbprint i don't know but it did work they matched my mother's name, father's name, the fact they're living, the fact they're dead, you know, they're dead, whatever they are. They, they got my wife's name. Uh, they got my birth order, my two children. And the fact I only had two children, a son and daughter, and then they got my grandchildren. And again, they got my grandchildren, but they didn't get my step-grandchildren. So, so I had to think about that. Well, I got six grandchildren, but okay. Even though, as a grandparent, you never think of them as step grandchildren, the reading, you know, it doesn't. It just goes straight grandchildren, just directly from the line. So that was another time I had to stop and think. So when you think you're getting an answer, it doesn't sound like you. You got to stop and and think about it. Yes. Editing process, finding these, you know, the leaves. I call it an editing process because they're like you know, looking through your life, they're taking pieces of it. And I, it's, um, it was actually very artistically done. It was like, it's like an art, a piece of art unfolding. It's like these guys are, are painting this picture, you don't know where it's going. But when they get through, you see all the colors and everything come together and, and they really have captured, they have captured the you that was and is at the moment. They really capture the now and they go backwards because they're, you know, it's your past. And so that opens your heart up and your mind up. Your, your, your mind is going, well, how do they know that? And then it goes from how do they know that to, well, if they know that, then I, I got to trust what they say forward because that's the hardest part. I'll tell you what you already know because you can match that, right? Mm -hmm. So, yes. Yeah. Um, I, I had the honor and obviously honor and pleasure of uh, being your moderator <clears throat> during a matching reading. So I can vouch for it because I've, I've seen once, one or two readings before, believe it or not. I've been in one or two before. Um, so um, it's an amazing experience every single time. It doesn't matter who the person is. It is an amazing experience for me as a moderator to be in a matching and see the sparkle and the glow in the eyes of people when when they hear their own name repeated to them, the parents' names, and they're just in awe and and uh, in disbelief. Uh, it's just beautiful. It really is <clears throat> when you can see that's one moment of realization. Oh my God, there is a leap. 
written in ancient Tamil for me several thousand years ago by a sage, a great sage in India. How, how special is that? It's just, uh, it's mind blowing. And I know so because I've, I've had a reading done myself and I, and I remember the excitement, the disbelief, the, 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 the awe, just uh, wow, how can this be that they know my name, um, a guy who has no clue about anything that who I am, where I'm from, uh, my background, my parents, none of that, and yet they were able to, to match me to, to a palm leaf. Yeah, it's, it's, it's an amazing, humbling, beautiful, exciting experience indeed it is. And, and that one moment when the matching happens, that, you know, that one moment when the reader starts rattling off the names, you're just like a child. I mean, I, I felt like a child. I was like, wow, Christmas is true after all, you know. <laughs> um, there is a Santa after all. So I totally understand. And uh, thank you so much uh, for your willingness to share bits and pieces of your matching and reading. Uh, uh, it shall be of great help to all the seekers out there uh, who want to know and have a better understanding of, of the process and what is, what's in there for them, really. Why should they do it? And what can they get out of it? அரவுதனை அணியாக கொண்டு நின்று அங்கவதில் இடவாகும் எனக்கு மீது ஒரத்திரிவின் காலையொனி பலாவுடனை this is the prayer by shiva vakya magarishi said the magarishi who wrote your palm leaf is shiva vakya he prays to lord shiva and parvati shiva vakya magarishi he is one of the great sages out of 18 maharishi shiva vakya maharishi is one of the great sages who wrote your palm leaf and today he prays to Lord Shiva and Parvati. So two energies I have the blessing of Shiva and Parvati. Two of the blessings are having. So Shiva and Parvati's blessing for you to get here. Just to make sure that Bill understands, uh, Shiva Vakya Maharishi is the saint that wrote your palm leaf. You know, the bundle was written by him, every single palm leaf in it. And he received the message for you by meditating to Lord Shiva and Goddess Parvati. So you got the blessings of these three for today's reading. So this Shiva Vakya Maharishi's prediction a bit different from the other Maharishi. Comparing other Maharishi, Shiva Vakya Maharishi a bit unique. The reason because his prediction or his guy is a kind of narration. Narration means like a story or giving a kind of speech like a speech like this to give a guidance for us so shiva vakya the way he writes his his messages are a little different to the other uh, maharishis the 17 others it gives it like a speech a direction <laughs> So before telling your prediction, Bhagavad gives some identification. Sir. The first identification is your thumbprint. It has a category name. Your category is Urusuri Magudam Reha. Now talk about your thumbprint name, sir, which Shiam is typing into the chat. Urusuri Magudam Rehai. That is the name of your thumbprint, and it's written in the chat. Already there are four dots. Four dots are open for you. Now the fifth dot is also is in process to open the fifth dot for you. Might be in the past it was open, but right now it is average. Wow. So you have already four dots open. The average person only has, has three dots open. And your fifth dot is in the process of opening up. Amazing. Might be, might be in the past, might be open, but right now it is weak or invisible. So your fifth dot might already have been open, but at the moment it's either weak or invisible. But you have the potential for five. The average. Uru means means one. So the meaning of a thumbprint is Uru. Uru means one, sir. There is one energy. Suri means circle. There is an energy circle. So your life circle, a kind of. Uru means one, and Suri means circle. So one circle. circle. 
it represents for some kind of power, power, ability, or some kind of skill. That means those who have this kind of oratory, high knowledge, intelligent will be. So for you, you are a very skilled person. High knowledge, graduation, education, creative knowledge, advising ability, you have a good ability to heal others by your advice, counseling, teaching. So high creative knowledge you have based on the story. Do you understand, sir? Or should I repeat? Repeat. Repeat. Okay, so Urusuri is one energy or one circle, one power. Those people that have this particular thumbprint name have high knowledge, uh, are intelligent, and also the power to heal and guide other people. Mm -hmm. So you have a highly evolved spiritual wisdom within you. You are an educated man. And uh, with this power that you have, you can help and heal others. Urusuri, one, there's one big energy in you. They're all uniting, as opposed to two energies that will be a different uh, reading altogether. But yours is one. And she, I'm just to make sure, I would need to repeat everything to Bill because he has a hard time understanding you, okay? So you need to uh, put a pause a little bit, then I repeat, and then, um, and then we can continue. Thank you. The second part is called Maguda. Maguda means it's a special kind, a kind of crown. Maguda means crown. So it can be spiritual crown. It can be opening the high chakra, Kundalini, chakra or crown. Maguda means leader. So it has a different meaning. So Mag Maguda <clears throat> means crown. It's either, a it could be a, a spiritual crown on top. That means, um, um, can, can you, uh, uh, like a, a spiritual master or leader connected to the universe? Crown chakra, crown chakra. Connected. It is also representing your crown chakra, the seventh chakra. So let me just make like a crown, like a Maguda. Who, who you can see Maguda in, on, uh, in the background, on the poster. You see, she's wearing a Maguda. Let me there, is there, is a, uh, yes. area. there is a specific ability in that you are a king. So there is no one who is higher than you, like the ability, you are the master, superior or supreme person. It can be writing, art, spiritual, you are a master by like this high position. So in what you do, you're a master, having this um, uh, name. You In your field, you are a leader. There are not, no one or not many that are quote unquote above you. You are reaching the top of your field. In your thumbprint, there are four dots on that side. The first dot, education, career, profession, spirituality. Good, good dot. So there are four dots in your on your thumbprint. The first one that we're going to talk about is about your education, uh, spirituality. Yes. The second dot represents your family. That means your health, health, money, property, family. It can say almost positive, but based on your parents are a bit weak because they are not living, not alive now, but almost the second dot also positive for it. So the first dot that we talked about, your education, spirituality is good, very good, very open, 100% positive. The second one dot that we're talking about now is about your health, your family, parents. That's almost 100% positive. The reason why it's not 100% is that, for example, your parents have already passed on. And no, Otherwise, it is perfect. And also no real sibling, only half sibling or stuff. Yeah, and also because you don't have full siblings, only half siblings. That's the only reason why the second dot is not 100%. Mm -hmm. But in reality, it's it's very good. It's perfect. Yes. Mm -hmm. The third dot represents your relationship, marriage, and kids. We can say it's positive. Related to children is good. Related to your partner, wife is good in your life. So the third dot represents your relationship, your marriage, your kids, and you can say that um, in general, also very good. And the fourth dot connected to social life, that means social service or social life, what you dedicate yourself towards the people, helping the people, guiding the people, serving social, so it is positive for the fourth dot. So the fourth dot, uh, which represents um, your social life, your social work, you dedicating yourself to others and helping others is also very good, highly evolved and uh, strong.
That means you connect yourself with the other people or uh, in the universe. But uh, there is a fifth dot also, which is right now is the fourth dot means that you that you give yourself to others. You connect with other people. So that's uh, perfect. But there is also a fifth dot, which at the moment is invisible or very weak. The fifth dot we, we call uh, connected to new uh, elements. It can be connected to elements, connectivity with the different planets, connecting with the different supreme energy. It is a kind of blockage season. That means there is not only the duty to help the people, there is also universal work. That means some kind of work to heal the universe. It can be connecting with the five elements. Elements connecting yourself or connecting yourself to the world. Hold on, hold on, Shiyam. So the fifth dot, which at the moment has a little block on, is the dot that uh, connects you with animals, the supreme yeah. power, or other planets. And that goes beyond helping other people. It's more on a global um, realm than the direct help of other people. And there is, it's, it's a, at the moment, it's a little weak or, or uh, invisible. Yes, Shiyam, continue. That means the, usually the fourth dot is connected about your energy, what you have giving to others. But you need to feel this energy. You need to connect to feel this energy. Right now it is a bit blocking. But in the past there was some connectivity, some kind of information, transformation, receiving some it can be intuition or channeling which you give for others. But right now it is one way. The path is one way which you give for others. But what you receive, what, what you connect in reverse, it is block, blocking. And that's, a, that's the fourth dot, Shyam, or the fifth dot? Fifth dot, fifth dot, it is blocking. So the fifth dot is blocked, yeah, but they said the fourth dot is good because he gives uh, to other people. But before, he was also connected to the universe, receiving uh, uh, energy and messages, filling up the vessel, so, so to speak. But at the moment, the, that connection is missing. Correct, Shyam? In other way, it is a reverse uh, or reflection. It is a reflection or reverse energy. What you do, you need to get the feedback, you know, it's a giving energy, reflection of energy, what you give, it is to have the reflection of energy is weak. The fifth dot is connected to the reflection, the energy. Okay, so what you give is is perfect, but what's missing is f f for you to receive. That portion at the moment is missing. So what are you doing? Your born on 16th of March, 1946, you are born, sir. You're born on March 16th, 1946. The day which you're born is Saturday, sir. You're born on Saturday, sir. You're born on a Saturday. Your moon sign is Leo, sir. According to the Vedic, your moon sign, Vedic, Vedic moon sign is Leo. In Vedic astrology, the moon sign is Leo. The Lagna Ascendant is Sagittarius. And in Vedic astrology, the ascendant is uh, Sagittarius. Now your age is seven. Uh, <clears throat> 75. Now your age is 75. So that means 74 completed. 75 is in process for you. You are in your 75th year. So now we can say 75 is a blessing for you by the Maharishi is the right time or the blessing for you to get your leave. So again by Shiva Bhakti Maharishi. You have the blessing to receive your reading today. Your Vedic birth star is called Puram. Puram is very good birth star. Birth star. So those who are connected to Puram. You have the, your birth star, sir, which is typed in the chat, is called Puram. And it's a very good birth star to have because those born under this birth star have yeah. some kind of soft energy. Because in general, sir, Leo, Leo is called as a strong energy because like a main energy, very strong energy. And also Sagittarius is also very strong energy. But so being born under Puram, it's a soft energy. So your your moon sign Leo and your the ascendant Sagittarius are very strong. Strong energy. So really, being born in under the birth star of Puram, it softens it. According to the Western, the Western zodiac zodiac says is Pisces zodiac. 
According to Western astrology, you're Pisces. It is also soft energy. So and Pisces is also soft. soft energy for you. If you, it is not compatibility like this means your direction might be indifferent. Not this artistic, but be indifferent. What do you mean, sir? I don't understand you. Might be those who are born on the Leo, Leo or Sagittarius, they are called a fighter. They, they are strong, like a king, warrior, no, strong. But your duty, you are also fighting, but in a different angle, in the soft way. Now, those people are usually born under Leo and Sagittarius, which are very strong, fiery um, signs. They're wow. fighter leaders, but because you're, you're given the, the opening uh, Puram, birth star, and in Western astrology, Pisces, it softens it, and hence your energies are directed towards what you're doing now in a softer way, helping other people. There is, Not a, you know, soft. There is a saying, instead of a sword, the pen nib is more sharper. So you're using the pen, no sharper. It's more sharper than the knife or the sword. So you're using it in a brilliant way. You're very using it in a good way. So that is the, your angle. The way you understand, sir? Bill, did you understand? It means the no. pen is more lighter than the sword. So the did you understand, Bill, or no? Yeah, no. yeah I, I'm missing a lot of it because my heart. No, no, I repeat it all. I repeat it all for you. I just you. as no, I repeat everything. So he says, given that you're born under Puram and your Western astrology is a Pisces, instead of fighting with a sword, which you would had you been a pure Leo and Sagittarius. You're now using the softer tip of a pen. And with the pen, you're leading other people instead of fighting with a sword. I like that analogy. The pen, the pen is stronger than the sword. There will be some ups and downs. Always you need to, like pieces, pieces kind of fish. Like a fish, always there will be a challenge. That means each moment you need to face some kind of new experience or obstacle challenges, but you're overcoming. Each day there is a struggle, but you overcome within a victory. Every time, step, stepping in in a victory, success, success, but with facing some struggles. So given given your, your, thumb, your thumb impression and, and, and your birth star and your zodiac, Every day is a challenge, every day, but you can overcome the challenge. Like Pisces, you know, ups and downs, ups and downs, the way they swim, fish, you do the same. You face a challenge, you overcome it, then comes the next, you overcome it, and so forth. This is- Whatever the goal, the goal you have which you're in your life, you will achieve it, so you're reaching your goal. Every time you keep yourself a destination, you're crossing, you're reaching it, you're succeeding it as a, Good leader. You're a leadership portion, you're a... And because you have this leader um, gene in you, the, the Maguda, remember the crown, you set your goal and you achieve it despite obstacles and challenges. You, you get there. So always you go in the right direction, truthful direction or being more honestful direction, reliable direction, being true for others, being motivating others and guiding others towards the light or towards the truthful direction you're guiding the, the people. So your, your way is to guide others in the right direction, help them, um, uh, make them grow. You have a, a, a strong will, the power to guide other people toward the light, toward improvement. <laughs> While getting the palm leaf, your parents are not living, sir. While getting your palm leaf red, your parents have already passed away. Your name Bill. Your name is Bill. Father name also the same name, Bill. Your father's name is Bill. Mother name, Marcella. Your mother's name is Marcella. For you, no real sibling, but for you, half sisters you are having, and also half brother you are having. You have um, no real siblings, but half sibling. You are married, sir. You are married, correct. The wife's name is Carol. 
Our money are Mahatanaki is saying that I have two children for him, one son, one daughter for him. You have two children, one son and one daughter, correct. Yaun Manam Kandu Valda. The children's life is good. So but the last two years a bit average for the children. There was a block, but might be in forty one or forty two days, even better situation will be there for the children. Can you repeat this one more time, Shyam? Sorry. Uh, now your age is 75, sir. Your age is 75. For yes. You, it is a positive period. For you, it's good. You are in a good time. So you, for you, it is good. It can be your work, health, profession, almost. Is good. But sometimes some health issues, but which you can able to manage in this period, 75. So now you are uh, in your 75th year, and it's a good period for you in general. <clears throat> And you might have some minor overcome, and that's not a big issue. Understood, sir? So, let me tell you, Kanamanaki, India, Kariuri, Padipani, Sutti, Yota. The next one and a half years for you, new opportunities, new work, new project, even run new articles or books, writing, publishing situation is there for you, sir. And also for you, the next one and a half years, very good times, new opportunities. Um, for example, writing a new book. In the upcoming year future also, award, award, reward getting situation is there, but this award, reward after March 2021 will be there for it. some kind of award, reward, or recognition. Among you the might receive an award or reward followers. next year after March of 2021. More followers, more followers will be there in following your spiritual message or your, your guidance in this period. And you'll have more followers uh, of your spiritual guidance next year. You can do and write some kind of spiritual works, a spiritual connected writing situation is there in the coming year which I need to do. So uh, his his duty is to do spiritual work, correct? Yes. So that but that's what Bill knows anyway. So that's what he's doing. But right now, comparing before two years, the last two two and a half years, your your journey or your success is a bit average, sir. Uh, compared to two and a half years ago. Before yes. So compared to. Um, more than two and a half years ago, at the moment, your success is average compared to those years back. The last two years, there was how the children had Saturn, K, the Jupiter, the same blocks for you was there, but minor. There was some minor block, the same block. Professional related, financial related, career related, business related, the same blocks for you, related to health wise also. So you were personally also impacted by these three planets, Saturn, Jupiter, and Cato. So that means business was impacted, um, uh, making money was uh, impacted by this, but you are now overcoming those times and better times are upon you. I guess we're gonna move on to the uh, puja reading now. Just going to listen to what uh, Guruji tells us and I will explain you the pujas afterwards, okay? Okay, thank you. Thank you. At first, the Guru Dhan, Guru Dhan, Guru Dhan, to Guruji Jaira, she had to give a kind of Guru Dhan donation. Then you have to give Guru Dhan to the Indian Farm Voting Institute in terms of return the gratitude. It can be by your salaries, getting the people, Helping the people for this institute, we need to that show you that it will come here for the institute. After that, you need to do prayer for Ganesha. Ganesha prayer to remove the block, especially there is health block and finance. So to remove the, your health block and financial block to make it better, health and finance. Other thing is good. Your life is good, the health and finance to remove the block. Six Sundays, you need to pray for Ganesha. By Thursdays, we'll puja for Guru, Guru Darshna Murti. Prayer, it is for the children, for the kids, Darshna Murti. 
Guru Darshan, for the children's good health, good career, good development, good relationship with you. Five Thursdays, pray for Guru. There will be some kind of negative people, jealous also in your surrounding, to avoid them. Some Fridays, the puja for Durga. Durga prayer, you have to do for some Fridays. And full moon day, you need to pray for Shiva and Parvati. By full moon day at last, for the spiritual success and development. Shivan Paradi for the five full moon day. These are the temple puja that you need to do now. There is some spiritual duties and social service in this life we need to do. Social service we need to do for people. Helping the people, guiding the people in the spiritual direction. It can be meditation, yoga, or family, family consultation, talking about family and guiding the people for family, spiritual work, or your energy work, energy healing. But the most important for the people, for the faith, you know, the faith healing, energy healing, that means belief, belief, faith healing, developing the confidence, removing the ignorance, removing the fearness. So when there is a fearness is removed, that means the faith is inbuilt in their life. So that you need to do in the future. Spiritual duty and guidance, you have to do so. So these are the pujas that you need to do in your life. So this is the end of your prayer and pujas. Well, is there no mantra puja? No, no, so there is no karma, no mantra puja, no other problems. Okay, wow. Okie dokie. Um, so there is no big block for you. So there is, we don't see a bigger block. Maybe there is a block for 41 days. So by the prayer, you can able only, you need to connect with yourself, you need to connect with the supreme energy. And there is, you need to try to connect with other elements. There are two elements is positive, fire and water. You need to try to connect with other elements, land, water, uh, sky, and air. Yeah. So you can balance by meditation. That means doing more practice in meditation, connecting yourself with land. You can do. Okay. I'll explain all that to you, sir. Um, do you have any final words or questions before we say bye-bye <clears throat> to our beloved um, Guruji, our senior reader, and uh, Shiam, our office manager and senior Yeah, what, what, was the, what was the name of the of, of <coughs> behind you, those? Uh, are they the same person behind you, the same saint, both those portraits? Oh, he's talking about the God behind you, uh, Shiam. Is that the same? Vati is on, on, from our point of view on the left side is Sarasvati. Murugan, Murugan, the God who brings the good fortune, knowledge, and family life partner, Murugan. They're two different gods, sir. God. How does he left uh, Lord Murugan right? <clears throat> there is Saraswati's blessing is there, sir. There is the God of Saraswati's blessing is there for you. So today is connected, yes. sir. Yes. <clears throat> So when we do prayers, when you do prayer usually, if the flower, if the flower is falling down, means we have the blessing. So when we do the, when we are doing the reading, the flower which was tied was fell down. So we were telling some message and we felt yes. that there is a blessing for you. Correct, yes. It was it's a good symbol. symbol. Symbol, it is a good symbol. So, okay. Because Thank you. The, the gods doesn't appear in a physical form, but through the energy. We can feel that energy here. So it's swelling down and there's a blessing when telling your messages. Mm -hmm. That's why during the reading it was told. When it was swelling, the flower was swelling, it, we mentioned that the Saraswati's blessing is there for you. Do, do you understand? Do you understand, sir? Bill, while they were doing the reading and they were giving you a special message, the, flowers the flower fell, down. fell off. No, I was actually watching. I was watch. I, I was staring at it. Maybe it was my problem. Maybe I, I'm sorry. No, no, I was staring at it, and as I was focused on it, it and then I kind of didn't want to call the attention. I thought, oh, "What happened?" You know. So I, I'm sorry. I apologize for messing up your flowers. But it was. Uh, I, I was just staring at that corner up there, and it just it went. So, sorry. No, no, no. It's that's a good good sign. No, it's, it's a good sign, sign, good sign. It's a good sign yeah. for your blessing. It's a blessing from the goddess, Saraswati blessing. But uh, 
Yeah, it was interesting. My, my, my first reading that I got 10 years ago, everything they predicted about me happened. There was nothing left to happen. That's why I was, <laughs> I was kind of going. So I thought the only thing left was had to be death, right? So, yes. but I feel a need to be there for. So it's good to know that I, I'll be able to extend the, my services, whatever they may be. Let's get real. Nothing, nothing is us. It's all from the one source. Yes. And if we're lucky enough to be blessed to be used in some way or manner, that's a blessing to be used. You're from a good source. Your angel, that means as my reading told, either you, your wife, is a source of angel. Not from the angelic energy is uh, for you or for the wife. It is already mentioned in the lead because the reason why we 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 are we told like this means even though there is lots of blood, it doesn't affect you. That means you have the ability to protect. It is beyond the human level. So you're not in a human level. Your reach I already there beyond the human level. That's why the blocks doesn't affect you and your wife. Bless the both of you. And uh, I humbly thank you. Keep up the work. I'm trying to help Dr. Q here because he contacted me after people told him about me. But when he contacted me, I intuitively knew, no, I'm supposed to help him because he is helping preserve, protect, project, and educate people on what you're doing. Yes. And this needs to be done. So if any way this helps Dr. Q, uh, my testimony is, is out there and, uh, and I'm attesting that this reading for me was 100% accurate. Uh, not from a, I guess it feels right. No, it's from a knowing that this was exactly correct. Whole different level. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'll let you guys go back and do your job. <laughs> Thank you, Koji. Thank you, Shiam. Thank you. Now, having, having spoken about your uh, matching experience, um, let's move on to your reading part. You know, the whole reason why we did the search for your bundles and then had the matching live um, on, on Zoom is to get a reading done. And uh, just uh, as, a, as, a, as a starting point, the reading is quite intricate, complex, and, and, and detailed. And the beginning of the, the reading is when you get your thumbprint name explained to you. Now that in itself is quite something because uh, your thumbprint and thumbprint name is kind of like a, a genetic imprint that you have and you cannot change that at all. That's the only thing that's not changeable. That's you in, in, in a broad spectrum. It explains you, your soul, your journey uh, pretty well, I should say. And then once you explain your, your thumbprint name, they explain your energetic dots. Each person has uh, at least three dots, usually three dots, I should say. You could have more than three. And each one of these energetic dots represents an area of your life. And those can be changed and improved if in it there is a block. If you have a family block, or a child block, or a spiritual block, a health block, whatever that might be, they tell you then what, what to do to fix it. Then, uh, then you're told your birth star. They compare Vedic astrology with Western astrology. So that's all just the basics. And just the basics uh, take, I don't know, 10 minutes or so. And only once you're confirmed, your thumbprint name explained and everything else done, only then the reading starts. And the reading, one more time, is very important for people to understand, is based on your overall energies, not your mood, your energies around the time of your reading, uh, um, astrology, Vedic astrology, and your thumbprint name. And those three then give you a likely trajectory of your life until you die. One more time, your life is not set in stone. It's just a likely trajectory based on those three things um, and uh, until you basically pass on and it comes in blocks of years. And it covers the good, the bad, and the ugly. And if something is not so good, if you're being told a challenge in whatever area of your life, because this is a so-called whole life reading, meaning it covers all aspects of life, family life, spirituality, health, money, career, 
um, fam, uh, kids, grandchildren, love affairs, you know, they even tell you when there is an opportunity for love affairs. So everything really, your entire life. So if something is not so good, if, if there's a challenge, don't despair, don't get uh, stressed out because at the end of the reading, you get a puja reading and the puja literally translated means a healing or a prayer ceremony. It is your homework, what you can do to fix the challenges that were identified in your reading. Um, and, um, and, um, and if you do carry karma, that was important to me for my first reading, uh, really, because uh, I only get my first reading done because of health issues. You get a karmic reading if indeed you carry karma from a previous life. And it's only a big enough negative karma. Not the small stuff, big enough negative. We all carry karma, period, good and bad. But the only time you get a reading, a karmic reading, is if that big enough negative karma impacts you now, this lifetime. And then they will tell you in your puja reading how to fix it. So that is just an overview of, of the reading. And then of course, at the end of your reading, you can ask as many questions as you want. So one more time, folks, please do get ready, get prepared for that. You can write down as many questions as you want so that you won't forget. But we send these things to you in an email before you get the reading done. So please read the email that we send you because it comes from the heart. We really want you to get the most out of your reading. Um, fill in the matching form, get ready, have a, questions ready that you want to ask most of it is touched upon during the reading anyway but some of it might not and then you can uh, delve deeper into things that you want to know and um so having given you having given you now an, an overview of the reading part let's go back to reverend bill in in uh just tell me how, how was it how did you feel after your reading that's to me the most important reading I'm glad we're doing this a couple of weeks after the fact because uh, I, I would have had trouble verbalizing. I'm even having trouble at this stage because it it really hits the essence of who you are, really who you are. Yes, and uh, so it really cuts spiritually right into you. It it's, uh, it lays it out, and and I was. It was it was sacred. No other word I could say was, it's a sacred process. And uh, for those who get a reading, no matter how the reading goes, no matter what is said, you have to look at it all as a, a, as a sacred message. It's coming to you for a reason at this time of your life. Uh, it could be a lifeline. It could be a life changer. It could be. Uh, a confirmation of the direction you're going. What, like in my case, it was it was a confirmation, which uh, was really everybody needs confirmation. You really need to know you're on the right path. You know, when you're going down a road, you want to know does this really lead, lead to where I want to go? And so it's always nice. You think you do, you think you know it. So it's always kind of nice to get confirmation. So it, the reading was was uh, I was going to say. What can I say about it? It was beyond what I would have expected. It was much deeper. Because it dealt with issues that, a couple of issues, like why I was struggling from my last book to this book, for example. Yes. It kind of went into some things like I was rewriting it and then I didn't want to publish it. Nobody knew that but me. <laughs> Maybe one or two very close friends, you know, they knew I was, I was thinking about on changing some things in my writing so and I didn't and then this kind of confirmed that was the right thing to do and it also confirmed why I was having trouble getting started on my next book and that very week that I'm getting a reading that's like that block I hate to use that term that block was like lifted and I just go no channels open I'm, I'm writing this I, I've got a vision of what this thing is going to be so that was part of my reading which was kind of on a personal side, everybody will get their own little unique message. But it was good to know that my, my grandchildren are, are doing well spiritually and my, my son and daughter and, uh, and my wife. Um, yeah, it, it was, without getting into depth of details, I was not disappointed. I was, I felt honored, but that, 
when you say that and, and as you look at my reading, you go, uh, it, it, it's, it's not, it's, it's, I wish I could be more humble. It humbled me to hear what I heard because it was beautiful in, in a sacred way. And, and just even me saying that is, I feel like I'm violating the sacredness of, of what I was told. So anyway, suffice to say, the reading uh, was 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 very heartfelt. It's only more, and you've known me long enough, Dr. Q, that I'm not usually one grasping for words. I could just rattle on for two hours, and talking about this reading, I, you notice I'm having trouble. It's it's an area that just I'm going. I really want to share this, and then there's a part of me that says, "No, this is really personally sacred," and hold back. Yes. So I'm in that hold back stage, but I really want to grab my friends and say, "Go get your own. Have the same struggle I'm having. It, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a joy." And uh, so, yeah, it, it was something I'm really glad that uh, you suggested it to me because I wouldn't have had it done. But then of course I would have had it done because everything lined up and then we met and then you suggested and you know, those things, it was destined to be right. So saying I would have never had it done. I would have never thought that I would have had it done. And uh, I'm pretty good at that stuff. So it was, was it on my agenda? I had one reading I go, that's it. I needed this reading for a lot of evident reasons. So thank you. Well, we have to thank you, of course. Um, I guess all that there is uh, left to say is uh, some parting words, um, a summarization of your experience, um, something that you want to ask me. I'm here to answer your questions too. Um, if I can be of any help to you, of course, at all. And um, yeah. By the way, uh, when people watch, it, I, I don't know how much of it you're going to show, hopefully just little snippets, uh, that I have you kind of, the guy is interpreting from the other guy, but then I'm having you interpret to me and people got to realize that you know, I was in war, I got blown up, I, I have hard of hearing problems. So I, can, I have trouble reading uh, and listening to a, a foreign dialect of any kind. It's, it's, it's a little hard for me. Having you re, restate it, or I could understand it, uh, wasn't because I was stupid, I didn't understand, it was basically because I couldn't really hear it, I wasn't grasping it. And having that uh, ass asset available made the reading much more comfortable for me, because I didn't have to worry about straining myself to hear it. I, when I listen to the recording now that you sent, I can slow it down and stop it and I go, oh, okay. Here's a little bit more to that. There's some lining up with this, and Saturn's moving here, and Cato or whatever it is moving. I mean, there's things going on, and now now I understand, and then I can. That was the other thing. So then, now I can go and Google some of these things that were on there, you know, terminology or things or astrology, Vedic stuff, and then I get a little deeper meaning into it. And so, it, as you watch it and you research and you analyze a little bit, not heavy analyze, just with your heart, it just keeps getting richer. There's the message that is apparent, right? And then there's the underlying messages which aren't so apparent. So for example, there was one place in there that was a little trouble, I, I tried to figure out what was going on and, and the guy says, you have no trouble giving. Giving is not your problem. And then, and then when I played it back, he's saying reflections from others, reflecting feedback, and, and, and you were saying receiving back. And that's actually two different things, and they're both kind of both apply. But reflecting, people reflecting feedback, that's important. So that, I, I looked at that, and I go, oh, in other words, there's still knowledge and wisdom out there flowing, even from babes, from everybody, right? There's, you got you to gotta listen to all the feedback from the universe and from people and everything. So mm -hmm. giving's just not enough. I mean, you give and give and give and do your stuff. But you have to allow the people to reflect back to you whatever it is that you need. So 
So that was like a double entree thing there. It wasn't just about receiving, like I got something coming to me. No, it's about opening up the opportunity for reflection from others and feedback, literally feedback. So, so that was like, uh, that, you know, when you watch it again, you go, oh, so, but I didn't catch that the first time. It was like, okay, I'm giving, I'm not giving so much back. It's not a problem. I don't care if I get anything back at all. But it wasn't about getting things, things back or appreciation back or none of that. It was more about feedback, which is a whole different thing than receiving things. It's feedback. That's, that's a gift of wisdom. That's a gift of knowledge. So if that makes any sense. Yes, it does. Uh, I, thank you very much for sharing that. Um, really appreciate it. Well, you know, we want to keep this interview short because uh, we're editing and <laughs> bits and pieces of matching and reading into it. Um, <clears throat> I guess uh, the matching and the reading uh, uh, are pretty much self-explanatory anyway, even though we edit it down to just uh, bits and pieces here and there. But I think people will have a good understanding of the process and uh, with us talking and explaining things uh, even further, I think folks should be able to, to, to get the most out of uh, your experience, your reading and our talk, so that um, it encourages them, empowers them um, to start their own journey, really. And um, we're, that's why we're here, really. That's why I'm doing it. Uh, I'm here to help people. I'm here to help seekers and, and my Indian friends. Uh, I want to preserve this on one hand, this uh, ancient and powerful wisdom, <clears throat> making sure that there are enough good, high quality readers there to, to do the job uh, that you can trust, people that you can trust, uh, highly ethical, um, humble, knowledgeable um, saints, really. Uh, that's uh, who these readers are. <clears throat> Every single one that, that works with us and also the interpreters that we have in India too. And we wanna make it as simple as possible for folks out there. Hence, we have a Western person in every call, we'll call them moderators, if you wish. Um, they hold your hand, really. I, I was holding Reverend Bill's hands um, so that he will get uh, the most out of uh, his reading. But we do that for everyone. So Reverend Bill is no different to any other reading that we do on a daily basis. I'm just, I just feel humbled and honored to uh, having stumbled upon you. Um, and so people kept referring to you when they signed up uh, uh, because they had listened to your previous talk um, on your original palmer reading, uh, the video that you put on YouTube, and then people saw it, and then they Googled us, and then they found us. And then I was like, who is this Reverend Bill guy? <clears throat> Let me Google him. And, and see if I, if I can find him or not. And I did, obviously. And the rest is history, because uh, we connected a few months ago. And uh, we've been talking quite frequently, I, I should say, over the past few months. Um, and, um, and I hope this is uh, the beginning of a long friendship. <clears throat> and I hope that I get to meet you in person once the situation allows uh, for uh, it. And I can fly back to California again then um, thank you very much um, from the bottom of my heart uh, for allowing us to record this, uh, for your help and support, um, for your explanations and, and uh, your generosity in allowing other people to see uh, bits and pieces of your personal journey. Uh, it's very sacred and it's very personal. And uh, <clears throat> it takes a big heart to allow other people to, to peek into it. And for this, I'm very grateful. So on behalf of the entire Institute, Thank you so much uh, for being there for us, for helping support, and um, very much looking forward.